Uh, before we begin, a quick announcement on the protocol we will follow during this call. Uh, in the chat window, please feel free to introduce yourselves, share the network you work with, and your biggest communications challenge. If you have any questions or thoughts to share while the session is on, please type them in the chat window. We'll pick them up during the Q&A time. We will have two break out sessions as we move on and we'll talk about them when we reach there and finally let's be on mute when we are not talking now i would like to introduce you to our special guest this evening an expert in network weaving she's been weaving economic and community networks for more than 40 years after 20 years as executive director of appalachian center for economic networks she decided to devote her energies to helping communities around the globe form system shifting networks by training and supporting network weavers. She has led hundreds of interactive workshops on applying network approach. Today, she'll share with us her ideas on how to think about our network communication ecosystem that emerges from network culture and values. We are delighted to present to you June Holly. June, it's an honor to have you here with us. Over to you. Thank you so much, and <clears throat> I'm just delighted to do this today, and I just want to let you know that uh, at the end, <clears throat> we'll be sharing both the link to these slides and to all my social media uh, accounts that you might want to follow, and also um, I'm offering the group a free copy, a PDF of the Network Weaver Handbook. Now it's 400 pages long, but we'll give you that link at the end so you can download it and uh, use it as, as you uh, may want to. Uh, I, again, I want to encourage everybody, everyone to, <clears throat> in the chat, and you may need to go to the bar, uh, either at the bottom or top, and where it has options, exit full screen. And that way you can uh, actually see the, the chat more easily. And I'd love for you to put in your communication challenges that you've been having uh, in, in the chat. And, and I think along with any questions that you have as we go along, because what I'm going to be uh, saying, there is probably a lot of jargon in it that I don't even recognize. And please feel free to ask any kinds of questions about what I'm saying. Um, I'll be presenting a little bit of information. We'll have a time for questions. And then we'll be going into breakout rooms where you can talk about how to apply uh, what you've heard uh, to your own uh, experience in your own networks. So what I'm going to try to do is give you some fresh ideas about how to think about communications. Um, and that really can help you unlock the potential of networks. A lot of times our networks <clears throat> are not as active and engaging and action oriented as we want. And so the communications network, uh, communication system can really help that happen. And then you're gonna get a chance to discuss how you might apply these ideas to your own situation. And then I'm also going to give you some charts um, that will help you think this through. We're not going to go over them in detail, but you will have access them, to them uh, at the end of the session. So before we start, uh, just to talk a little bit about this idea of networks. And when I talk about networks, I'm talking about the kind of networks that I think almost all of you are part of which are called system shifting networks. In other words, you're trying to change a system and make it work better for people. And these kinds of networks have certain characteristics that are important to understand and help you understand why you need a different kind of communication uh, system than you might need in an organization. So a system shifting network usually has this diverse core of people and has clusters of di different kinds of people. It might be people from different geographies, from different sectors, different types of organizations, different ages. So hopefully you have a lot of those kinds of differences in your network. And you know, the, the trick, of course, with communications is how do you keep them knowing what each other's doing. 
then the part that people forget about is that your network is not just a set of people who are all working on a purpose. It's also got a, what we call a periphery. And these gray circles are what we call a periphery. Those are people, those are, you know, people who can offer new resources to you, people that you're not in contact with all the time, but are still very important for your network. And that's also your pathway. You have to be thinking constantly about a pathway where new people can come into your network. And so your communication system also has to think not just about your core, but about your periphery. Now, system shifting networks <clears throat> are diverse. We just talked a little bit about that. And they are intentionally inclusive, really trying to be open to lots of different kinds of people. Um, and, and usually not just the people who are trying to help, but the people who you're actually trying to help need to be involved in your network as well. And this idea of that these kinds of networks are what we call self-organized. That means that people in these networks feel that they can see something that needs to happen and they can pull together others to make something happen, to try to experiment and try something new that's gonna really deal with the problem or issue uh, that the network has formed around. Um, so these networks are, tend to be very experimental, trying new things all the time, and then really learning. And I always tell people that in your network, you need to be spending a quarter to a third of your time on learning, not just doing. And if what we find is that we're often making breakthroughs, uh, um, we're, or we're falling flat on our face, and if we take time to learn, and try to understand what we're doing, we can, the network can be much more transformative. Um, and so uh, these are just some of the qualities of the kinds of networks that I think most of you, whether you realize it or not, are, are really part of. So how, do, how does communications in a, a system shifting network differ? from communication, say in an organization or an association. Well, what, I, and I'm gonna be going through uh, <clears throat> at least the first three of these in, in some detail, that a communication system needs to start with what we call network values. And we're gonna, you're gonna get a chance to do a little survey uh, to see where you are in terms of network values. It also needs to start from the needs of the participants. It needs to be emergent rather than something that's broadcast out to people. It needs to engage people in the network in actually designing the communication system, not to have a set of experts uh, designing it and then trying to drag people in. So then we're gonna go over five key network communications processes and um, talk about how you kind of set those in place. We're gonna talk about this idea of network weavers. These are people, uh, this is not a, necessarily a paid role. These are just people who are trying to help make the network work by connecting people, helping action get started, uh, sharing information. And this role of network weavers is really important to making a communication uh, system actually work. And then it's really important that your communication system use data and capture learning so that you can really be continually improving uh, your network and uh, capturing the breakthroughs uh, in innovations that you make. Now, don't forget, if you have any questions about this, just open the chat box and uh, put your questions in there and, and I'll be answering them in a few minutes. So what does this mean that the uh, network communications ecosystem emerges from network culture? Um, so I like to think of network communications as a tree and that the, the network culture, and these are the new ways of, of behaving and the new things that you value in a network as opposed to in, say, an organization. And 
Uh, it's really important that you start with this culture because it, it, it's requiring us to behave in new ways, different ways than, than we were, most of us were raised to uh, uh, be. And that's going to flow through and make the whole communication. If you make a communication um, system that's all based on broadcast or one-way interaction, you know, you're not going to get the kind of network power that you want. You know, it's going to have to be about, you want it, it to be based on engagement and being able to interact as peers. And so it's, you know, not about the tools. You don't start with the tools and say, oh, we've got to get Slack. We've got to get Zoom, whatever. You start with the culture and what kind of behavior and actions do you want to encourage people uh, in people? And so, but what are these network values? Well, if you, uh, I think that someone is putting a link in the chat and that link will be to a very short survey um, that I'd like you to fill out. Now it asks you some questions about yourself and then about your organization. Now, if you're not part of an organization, um, you can just leave that blank. Uh, then when you're done, uh, just click submit response. And I'm going to be opening up this survey right now myself. And you're going to be able to see the results of the whole group that's here um, in, in just a minute. So here's what the, this should look like. And go ahead, just take a few minutes um, to uh, answer the questions and then click submit, as you can see down at the bottom. And then I'm going to show you the results. Um, you can also click yourself on see previous results. So right now, <laughs> one person has already finished. I'm gonna keep refreshing this uh, so that you can see um, uh, the responses. And then we're gonna kind of analyze them, see where your strengths and your challenges are. So go ahead, let's take this and I'm gonna keep refreshing. This is quite interesting, June. Thanks for this. Okay, maybe another minute.
Okay, if you just keep continuing on, if you're not uh, completely done, and uh, but I think we have enough responses that we can look at this now. Um, when what I one thing that I want to do, and I and I forgot to do, is to um, give you know I'm going to share the link to this survey so you can actually make a copy of it and use it if you want. Now these are not the only network values. There's about 40 network values and in the Network Weaver Handbook it has a list of of a bunch more of these and you know it's it's just a wonderful thing for your group to go through and figure out which ones are important for your network. This one just has what I think 10 or so of the network values here. Now, one thing that's really interesting to notice, we're, I'm gonna slowly scroll down through these and you'll notice like, um, you know, you're a group that is pretty open to new ideas um, for sure. And, but we'll go through and try look, kind of look at the ones where you are really strong. And then also at the ones, which ones are you scoring? Are there more threes and maybe even twos on and those will be your challenge areas where you know it's really good at, for you to talk about okay how can we we help ourselves um shift on that a little bit now the other thing that's really interesting to notice here is the difference between you and your organization are you like for example uh, you can see here on the first one that people, and you've got to really look at the numbers on the side, but you can see that um, quite a few more people are open to innovation themselves than their organization. Organizations often tend to uh, be a little more stuck in the old ways of being. Um, and so part of what often you have to spend your time and energy on is helping your organization shift too. So let's take a look at these. So you can see, okay, very open to uh, new ideas, but we get down to diversity and you can see that, uh, that that's, that's an area where individuals are a little weaker than the organizations is really an interesting response there. So that, um, you know, you're, a lot of you are not necessarily thinking about how you're engaging with diversity. Um, and, and diversity is so critical to innovation and, um, you know, making really successful uh, networks. Um, so here's another one about transparency and sharing freely. We know that it's so important if we share broadly what we're doing, other people can learn even when we made a mistake. And that's often the most important thing to share. And in this case, you can see that individuals are more transparent than their organizations. Um, and organizations often tend to hold the information uh, closely and not be as creative. Okay, so being co-creative, that means collaborating with others to be creative. And you can see here, again, it's like, um, uh, this is not quite as strong, a lot more threes and fours, uh, and organizations and individuals are uh, scoring about the same on this. Oh, look at this one. And this one is a really hard one for, I think, most of us, is being comfortable with uncertainty and not having things planned and, and just being able to respond in the moment, which is an important part of capturing all the, you know, being able to respond to events as they happen and really take advantage of them, build on them. Uh, that's a, a very hard thing, I think, both for individuals. So this is one of the challenge areas, I would say. I might need to, uh, we're hearing some background noise, so you might want to um, <clears throat> mute yourself. Okay, so here's another one that tends to be a big challenge to people, is to let go of control and not have to control everything and give you know the, the power to the people, so to speak, and not have to be in charge. And this is another big challenge area. Okay, let's go through a little more quickly here. Taking risks is also very difficult, it, it looks like, compared to some of the other ones. 
oh, we have lots of people who work to make their work fun. And that's really, I think, an important part of, you know, what networks, we don't often talk about that, but, um, you know, being able to work from your passion and, and have time to, to laugh and, and, and have fun. Okay. Um, explicitly dismantling hierarchy and racism. Um, you know, fairly strong on that. P individuals more strong than um, their uh, organizations. Uh, and working collaboratively, fairly strong on that. So, um, you know, really interesting. And you can give this to people in your organization, in your network, and uh, really, um, uh, you know, really get some insights from this. But the more you're aware of these network values, the more your communication system will emerge from these values and thus be more effective. So, um, Okay, let's just a couple more things here. Um, let's just take a look at some things that, did I skip, no, that's right. Some things that you might wanna do in your network or your organization is, you know, actually get that list out of the Network Weaver Handbook and see if there are some values you think are even more important than the 10 that, that I shared with you. And really start talking, having conversations about which are your challenge areas or which are strengths that you can really build on um, and get some strategies to start shifting some of those. Because if people are not willing to let go of control, then how are you, you gonna get people, people ask, how do you get people to participate in your network? Well, they have to feel like they can do something that it's not all being controlled by you. Um, so uh, you might also want to make a little chart like this one where you list some of the values on the left and then on the right, talk about ways that a communication, um, like if you value transparency, uh, then you want to make it easy for people to tell their stories and to share information with others. Uh, so you might want to take this chart and fill it in with values that you think are some of the highest priorities and challenges and then talk about ways that your communication ecosystem is going to support these values. Okay, so now it's a time for you to talk with others. And so, uh, oh no, first we're gonna have some chance for questions. So can you, uh, I'm not sure who's going to be doing this, but if you yeah. can tell me some of the questions that people have. Yeah, so uh, we'll go with who asked first. So we had a question on retention and the value to users in the network from Jasby. Jasby, do you want to speak up, please? You can unmute yourself and speak. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. So my question was that in service-based networks, it is important uh, to retain the customers. So it, uh, the uh, customer acquisition is, is fairly uh, dependent on the service and the product that you are providing, but retention is a little more critical than that for service-based networks particularly. So uh, my question was, uh, one one possibility is, an, is a knowledge base that we can provide in, in that particular area, but what other than that can be a value addition for users for user retention on, on the product or network particularly? Well, I think that's where the whole thing about engagement. And so it's a really a challenge for a service network because I don't think that, that just knowledge, knowledge is, is good and important piece. But again, that's more of the broadcast kind of action. And what you want to do is get people, um, you want to get people engaged. So helping them, and we're going to talk a bit about this in the next section, but you want to get people engaged with each other, being able to find others who are interested in the same kind of thing or have some of the same kind of issues um, and, and be able to talk with each other. And so, you know, that's, that's a way that then once people feel like they can find others that have a similar problem or, or interest, and if you can help them have a Zoom session or have a face-to-face -face meeting, um, you know, with social distancing or whatever, then, then they will be more engaged and have more buy-in to the network.
Thank you. All right, there's uh, another question about the collective benefits from the society capital that Brikesh brought up. So Brikesh, if you can just unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi. Uh, so, so I run a network uh, based on the collective impact framework. It's, it's a clean air collective. It's an unbranded network and, and it was intentional. It's become very big now. We've got uh, an immense social capital where about 100 organizations, very diverse, are a part of it. However, the challenge that I face is how do we use this social capital to, uh, to, gain, to, to use our leverage by continuing to being uh, unbranded? So, so repeat that last part again. Uh, uh, the question is how do we leverage the social capital of the Clean Air Collective while continuing to be unbranded? Um, well, I mean, I think, again, the, the piece that I really encourage you to take a look at in the handbook uh, is the, I believe it's chapter nine, it's on self-organizing. And I really think that this is kind of the missing piece, is the capacity of people in the network, again, to find others who are interested in the same thing and actually help them connect and you know, start working on something together. That's that's something that we we think that, you know, we want to get beyond con conversation. We want people to develop deep enough relationships that they have some trust established that they can say, oh, there's ten of us that would really like to do this, or three organizations that would like to get together and begin to think about, you know, X. And the more your network can help that happen, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in the second part, that's that part about collaboration that's really important, that people are experimenting, they're trying, they see a, some problem, they think they have a new idea, uh, and they try it out, and they learn from that. And if it works, they share that with others and say, hey, we tried this it really worked, uh, you know, we'd be interested in expanding uh, the group of people who are trying this out. Um, and, and that's the way you can really get that momentum and really start um, things changing in your communities. So the book that I'm talking about is the Network Weaver Handbook. It's a 400 page handbook that I wrote a number of years ago uh, that really has tons of information and activities in it. And I'm going to be giving you the link to download the PDF of this document at, at the end. So you'll be able to uh, you know, get more information. Do we, is that it? Do we have time for any more questions? Yeah. June, I think we should move on to the breakout rooms. We do have a couple of more questions. Uh, we could probably take that up in the next section. I just love the creativity that I heard. And I, you know, just something to think about societal platform is there is so much incredible creativity around communications uh, among the groups. Just, I know in, in, in the, the three people that were in, in my group. And so something to think about, like how can you share what you're doing and communications in more depth? Because I think that you could steal ideas from each other and it would help all of you. So. Thanks, June. So I guess we're all back now. So over to you. Okay, well, I just hope that if you would put in the chat just some of the things that you heard about, uh, you know, some of the discussion that you had in your group, just, you know, things that were going through your mind as you uh, heard others talk. Um, if you would just share that in the chat, um, that would be great. And then meanwhile, uh, we'll go on to the next uh, section, if I can find it. For some reason, I'm having trouble always finding the slides, the slideshow. Uh, this may just take a minute for some reason. I, uh, I'm not being able to find the slideshow. Um, uh, it'll just be a second here. Um, this is really horrible. I'm not being able to find the... Do you need the link? Oh, here it is. There, here it is. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> it just it was hiding from me. Okay, so um, 
the next section, we're going to talk a little bit, get a little bit more concrete about how do you create a coherent experience for network members or participants that gives that feeling of belonging and really enables people to initiate and interact directly with each other. Um, you know, most, most uh, traditional communication processes, many of them, are one way where you're broadcasting out information. And what we want to talk about are communication processes that really encourage engagement, because that's how you get participants to be active, you know, in your, in your network. And so there's five uh, communications processes we're going to talk about here. And... Um, just, uh, I'm going to take each one of these and uh, uh, everybody can see this, correct? Hello? No, no, June, you're not able to see a screen. Do you want to try share screen? Okay, again? okay, I need to, I was sharing the screen, but I thought something maybe was wrong here. Okay, let me try sharing the screen again. I have to get back to the, here. I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what was going on here, but uh, here we go. Okay, so um, anyway, we didn't really miss anything here. Okay, so the five, so here's the, the tree again, and let me put this in uh, present mode. You can all see this, correct? Yes. Yeah, great, okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around and explain each one of these. And so have your network in mind and think about, you know, how well you're doing on each one of these and which ones you may need to work on and uh, hear about, because I'm sure someone in this set of, you know, uh, participants that are here today, you know, has some answers to some of these. And so you are each other's resources and you might write in the chat if you're, you know, what you're doing on each of these. So the first one is network pulse. So people need to be able to see the network as a whole and just have a sense of you know, what's happening in that network. They need to have a sense of belonging. They need to feel that the network is safe for them to say things. Um, and so uh, you know, how is your network doing in creating that whole sense of the network? I mean, some of the things you can do in that are to you know help people tell their stories, have people talk about. I, I know a lot of people talked about you know how hard it is for people to know what's going on, and that you need somebody called them rituals, but you need rituals or behaviors for people to realize they need to take the time to explain what they're doing, so people have a sense of the network. Um, the next piece that's really a big piece is network engagement. You have to move from the broadcast kind of just putting email, um, emails or newsletters out there and really help people connect, bring them into the network, uh, connect with each other, and especially finding others that are interested in the same thing they are. And so instead of thinking of your network as a whole, people don't engage, you know, on the level of, you know, hundreds of people, they engage in small groups. And so how are you going to help people, you know, find others who are interested in the same thing, set up a Zoom session or an email thread or a little WhatsApp um, you know, mini WhatsApp kind of thing, and be able to interact with each other. And, you know, one thing that we often neglect is taking time to build relationships. And so it's just like, if you have a Zoom session, going into breakout rooms, even if you just have 10 people, uh, going into breakout rooms with maybe just two or three people, uh, so people can get a chance to really know each other, um, you know, get a sense of the other person uh, so that they feel like they can work with them on something. The third is network action. And this is when I'm talking about self-organizing. The thing about networks is, you know, they're, they're, they're best when they're not planning, when somebody, a small group is saying, okay, here's what we're going to do, which is what happens often in organizations. But like, Somebody was talking about, okay, COVID came along and the artisans, you know, are kind of stranded. They're, they're 
nobody's buying things. And so talking about how you can, you know, help those folks actually begin to do things, to find new markets, to, um, you know, self-organize and act collaboratively. The important thing to remember, and we're going to talk about this network weaver role, is that people need to learn new skills. All people are not that great at collaborating and working well with each others. And uh, so part of the role of network weavers that we'll talk about is to help people learn new skills, help them, you know, relate well to each other, listen to each other, take turns, and not take up too much space. So network action, helping people act in smaller groups uh, is a really important part that, of what the communication ecosystem needs to do. Um, and uh, so then the other piece that's often neglected is learning is how do you know what's going on in your network? Uh, how are people taking time to actually reflect um, and uh, look at what they're doing, take time to stop and say, how's this working? What do we need to change? What are we noticing? Um, and, and asking those kinds of questions, which really usually provide these incredible insights that enable you to do things much more effectively. So how in the chat, just put like, oh, okay, we're doing really well on this one. And you know, have lots of questions about that one. Um, whatever. Okay, so then the, the last one is what we call network reach. And this is a part people often forget about is that they need to be sharing uh, and engaging people outside the so called network, they need to be reaching out and, and especially like every network needs to have a strategy for interacting with other networks. Because that's where you kind of can learn. It's just like, here is a network of networks today, and it's a gold mine. You all are doing lots of different innovative things. And unless you know what each other's doing, how can you benefit from what, what some of the things are happening? But I heard so many creative ideas just in my small group that I think it'd be great uh, for you to find some ways as a network of networks to share uh, what you're doing uh, with each other. And, and even, you know, if, if some really in, innovative ideas pop out, you could set up a Zoom session. You don't need to ask permission. Just set up a Zoom session and say, I want to talk with other people about, you know, how they're using WhatsApp creatively or what to do when you get over 250 people and you can't use WhatsApp anymore. So, you know, that would be a great group. And you could just uh, put a call out um, to this group and, um, set up a session where you could talk about that. Now, what, what I found is that, you know, the old way is you build a platform or, you know, put together a few tools and then you hope people will come. And guess what? They often don't. They often don't use, you know, what you've created. And so what we found is that you need network weavers to, and network weavers can be anybody who's willing to help bring people together and who's willing to model, you know, some of these new interactive, collaborative, uh, open ways of, of interacting. And you need to help get these network weavers to help design, um, you know, with participants, what you're doing. How many of you are actually involving people from the network when you're thinking about, like somebody's wanting to move to Telegraph? You know, are you getting people from the network involved in that process of designing what you need? You know, so it's so important to, you know, get people involved in designing whatever kind of communication. It will be so much more powerful. And so here's an example from a network that I work with, a fairly large network, about a thousand people, whatever. But, you know, so there's no, you know, it's starting from scratch. There's no communication system at all. And so that we interviewed, had in-depth interviews with some network participants, and then had some group activities we called conversation cafes to ask people, well, what do you want the network to do? How do you want, you know, how do you want it to help you communicate? 
And what we found out from both of those, it was just that people wanted to find others who were interested in the same thing. Now, this was a, a culture of health network around, you know, thinking about health more systemically than, than just health. Uh, and so people wanted to get together and talk about uh, homelessness, food access, maternal care. And so basically the network weavers um, um, identified um, a, a small group of people who how are helping design a profile system. So just like on Facebook, you get on and you have to fill out a profile. Well, what we, we wanted to do was design a profile where there were questions to ask about interests. And so people could check the things that they were interested in. And then the network weavers would identify one or two people in those uh, interest groups and get together with them to help set up a Zoom session. And so that's happening right now. And people are giving feedback on how's that process working? Did they like the profile system? Did it work? Do they feel like empowered to set up their own Zoom session? And then we're going to make modifications. So you see just taking a small bit of the communication system, helping people find their others and working with the participants to code design. So it kind of looks like this. And you might want to start by actually giving the network value survey to network participants. And, and then at the same time, asking about some of their needs and then figuring out one or two priorities for communication that uh, you could work with them to set up a pilot or an experiment, you know, just maybe with a small group. And then if it really works, getting the whole network uh, involved. Uh, so again, ask questions in the chat if you have some questions. Now let's talk, the, and this will be, you know, I think the last one here. What, um, let's talk about these weavers, these network weavers. Now in some networks, uh, like the Facebook network weaving group that I, uh, you'll get the link to join, um, that, what I did was to uh, ask for volunteers and six people volunteered to be network weavers on that site for six months. And they agreed that once a week, they would post a question, they would post some information and that they would respond to people that put up posts and, and, uh, and appreciating it and such. And that worked really great. And now that that site is pretty much self-organized and, and people just put things up um, on, on that site. But in other groups, people uh, have gotten a small stipend for being a network weaver and they meet monthly to develop their skills. But what they're doing is they're taking on a lot of the development of this communications that we're gonna go over in a min minute and are helping people put different parts of the communication system in place. And you can see over in the blue box where it has all the different roles that network weavers can play that are related to communications you know, in a network. And what I'm gonna encourage you to do is that to take, I have a set of slides here on each one of those five processes, network pulse, uh, engagement, um, self-organizing, and uh, reflecting and network reach. And you can take these charts and actually figure out what process you wanna prioritize. And then it talks about how network weavers can support those. And finally, you know, what are some of the tools that the network weavers might introduce to people to meet those uh, process needs. So, uh, you know, with that, uh, let's let's take a chance. I'm going to stop sharing and see if we have some questions here. Um, June, okay. there were there were a couple of questions from the last ses uh, section from Sarayu and Deepika, and then for now we have more questions from Ameya. So, do you want to go back to those old questions first? Okay, sure. Just if you can remind me of them. Sarayu, <laughs> sure. Sarayu, if you're on the call, could you just unmute yourself and talk? Okay, Deepika, is, is Sarah, are you there on the call? 
Okay, Deepika, do you want to go? Sure, thanks. Thanks, Vijay. Uh, my question was, um, uh, would the tools for nurturing an ecosystem be different from tools for how one goes about nurturing a network? Uh, or would it be the same? Well, they're a little more focused on communication. So they're focused on the part that is about, well, how, when people want to move to action, how do they communicate with each other? You know, are they going to, are they going to, you want them to be able to be peers. And so do you need to, you know, set up a Slack channel for them to, to interact? So it's more focused on, you know, that, that part of the communications part of the network building. I mean, cause certainly, yes, you notice they're kind of overlapping, but focusing specifically on, um, you know, the how do you get people to interact and be able to communicate with each other uh, in, in that aspect of the network's activities. There's a couple of, there are a couple of questions on the chat window, June, um, from Ameya. Um, Pavrush and Nehir. Um, Ameya, do you want to go first? And probably then it'll be time for us to break out again, June. Uh, sure. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, June, so I was wondering, especially in relation to network engagement, uh, and this is something we briefly discussed in our breakout earlier as well. Uh, is there a role or what might the role be for non-goal directed or non-solution directed forms of engagement, right? So stuff that's focused on building relationships or lines of communication, but not necessarily we are coming together to solve a given thing. Right, right. So you do have some of that, um, uh, you know, though it, it really helps if you can give a little focus. But for example, there's something called like speed networking. Now, and, you know, we often do this in Zoom sessions where you have two or three people in the beginning just say, hey, you know, uh, you have 15 minutes, uh, really tell each other, you know, about yourself, what you care about, what are challenges, you know, the, the things that, uh, you know, what do you do in your spare time, um, um, you know, when you're not working or whatever. So you ask questions like that that allow people to really, you know, get to know each other. And those are extremely powerful. And yes, they don't have to be focused on anything except building relationships. So, you know, you always do have some of that, you know, in, in networks. Um, and, it, you know, it's, it's really important. But then you ha need to find ways that once people build those relationships, you know, how do they then move to action, move to kind of focused discussions. So yes, yeah, so you have the completely just generic building relationships, then uh, focused discussions and uh, opportunities uh, for, um, you know, more interest groups or action groups. Thank you. Paurush uh, had a question, if we can have more examples about the next. So Paurush, do you want to ask? Yeah, sure. Hi, June, again. Uh, um, the question, so I, you gave an example of speed networking right now. So the question was along those lines, uh, if we could possibly share a few of these tools and frameworks for an organization like mine, which has both um, consistent operations, where, say, a, the same team works all, uh, consistently, uh, with each other amongst themselves and on the other hand also uh, takes up small projects where different people come together for a very short period of time and then disperse. So if I could have some tools and frameworks regarding that. Yes, so that's what those slides that I showed you at the end are and you'll get a link to those slides and it will take each aspect, you know, all aspects of a network and what it does is it says, okay, if you if you want people to be able to work on projects together, what are the network weavers gonna need to do? And then what are some of the tools and platforms you can use? 
And so that information is in there that then you can say, okay, it talks about, you know, here's a specific example. Uh, but I think also within this group of people who are here today that, that, that you have um, lots of people who are, you know, if, if there would be some way that we could capture some of what all of you are doing in communications, um, you know, you could just meet together and learn from each other as well. Um, okay, do we need to get going? Yes, Drew. Breakout, uh, breakout rooms, uh, so. So um, if, do you want to just tell, tell them what they need to be discussing in the breakout? We'll paste the link and then we'll open this out. Okay, what is the question on this, this next one? Um, you know, I, I think that we're just talking about, you know, I, I actually think that it would be a great idea for you to share some of what each of you are doing in communications, like share, like the thing you think you're doing most effectively in communications, and then also say what is a challenge you're still having, and maybe someone in the group can help you with that. So I think I know we in there, but I think that, you know, we talked about like, which are you doing action, reflection, whatever, and what are your challenges around there? But, you know, do that in, in light of like sharing, like what you're doing best about communication and then what are the challenges you're still facing, okay? Right, so now I think everyone has a link to take the notes. This is a different link from the previous one. Okay, uh, so, I'm sorry, uh, yeah? because we have had a drop down, uh, like number at 50, we might have to reduce the breakout rooms to like sure. five, if that's sure. possible. Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Just give me a second here. Or, or 10 maybe, I don't know. Yeah, probably 10. 10, yeah. You could just give me a second there. So wonderful, okay. so wonderful. One thing I'd love for people to do is in the chat, say, I would love to talk to other people about X. Like somebody said, oh, we're trying to use Mighty Networks, but it's not working. Get, you know, can we get a set of people who uh, have challenges and want to talk with somebody? If you can write that in the chat, and then somebody can, and, and maybe Societal Platform can help some of you set up Zoom sessions to talk about that because again, sure. such fabulous things people are doing. Sure. No, that'd be, that'd be great. So if you can, in the chat, like if you, I'm interested in talking with other people about what, or I'm interested in sharing about a success that we've had or, you know, here's a challenge we're facing. Uh, I'd love to talk to somebody about that. So um, I would love to have you put that in the chat and then, you know, we can, um, you know, I think societal platform, there's also tons of information now in these notes about what are people's challenges and what are successes. Cause there's a lot of people that are doing really great communication, network communication in this group. So, okay, right. now, um, any other thoughts? I'm gonna just try to, we just have six minutes here uh, to wrap it up. And again, I always have trouble finding, I should have spent some time find, trying to find um, the, um, my slides again. Uh, for some do, reason. do you want me to share screen for you, Ju? Yes, would you share screen, please? Sure. I, I have never had this problem happening before, but somehow. Sure, no problem. So I think in closing, you know, we just, uh, you know, again, encouraging you to put your challenges or who, what you want to talk to people with. But I'd also like you in the chat to think about next steps. Like, what are you going to do in the next few weeks? And, um, some other things that you might do and we'll put, and if somebody could copy these five things and put them in the chat. So each one of these uh, blue letters is a link uh, to, you can get the Network Weaver e-newsletter um, 
The other thing I didn't mention in here is that uh, if you have a story about your network stuff, I actually, uh, you can get paid 250 US dollars for writing a blog post that's accepted. So if any of you have a great, uh, something you've written about your network that would be interesting to a lot of people, uh, just email me, uh, my email's on the next slide, uh, and you can actually get paid for, you can see there's my email, uh, you can get paid for writing a blog post, you know, on an, a, a network story. Uh, so let's go back to the last one, but, uh, you know, really encourage you to download that Network Weaver handbook. Uh, some of it's a little dated because it was written um, like eight years ago. And so some of the technology doesn't even exist that it talks about, but there's still a lot of good stuff. Really encourage you to look at the chapter on self-organizing. I think you all are either doing that or ready for it, but you, you know, here's some new language and new ways to think about self-organizing. Uh, there's also 40 or more free resources on the Network Weaver site. You can download these, use them, send them to other people, change them, um, you know, whatever. And you can also use these slides if you want to, especially those charts. Um, and, and so in really encouraging. So in the chat, and then let's, let's just take, while we've got a few minutes left, if you can uh, just tell, tell the, us what you're thinking about doing. And you can also, um, you know, ask if you're willing to set up a group uh, to talk about something. We've had some people who are, uh, you know, learning and reflection practices. That'd be a great group topic. Uh, how to keep yourself motivated and inspired. We have lots of great topics here that people, um, uh, you know, I love this. It's great to know what we don't know. Yes, we have to be willing to admit we don't know a lot because that means we have lots of juicy, wonderful learning uh, ahead. So if somebody would, would yep. like to share, um, we can maybe exit the full screen now and um, just share what you, what you want to learn more about. What are you going to do? Just go ahead and, and unmute yourself and talk. So people have been uh, putting their thoughts in the chat window. I can, I, I'm happy to share something. So uh, I would like to actually go back and I realize that uh, of the five, three values we've been uh, doing fairly well. Uh, the first three, which is pulse engagement and, and self-organizing in the clean air collective. However, on let, network learning, which is tracking, reflecting and improving, I'd like to make a proactive effort because the usual suspects who are the most passionate, they all come together into a huddle and start doing stuff. But then there are some who need a bit of nudging. Uh, so they haven't reached out to ask for support or help. Uh, and, and I've been too busy as a coordinator to, to uh, personally reach out to each one of them. So I think I'll make an effort to probably spend a month or two reaching out to each one, maybe doing a one-on-one -on -one call to see how how we can help them and how this network can be of, of benefit to them. Great, great. One more and then I think we'll have to close out. Yes, and you're going to share the video of this? Yeah, so we'll be sharing the recording of this and also a feedback form by tomorrow. So they would have it on. Great. Okay, I think we're out of time and thank you all for sharing. This is just really great. I'm going to uh, save the chat. You know, you can save the chat uh, yourself by the box with little three dots in the bottom right. You can save the chat that has all the links in it if you want to get them right now. Um, you know, I thank encourage you to do that. Thank you so much, June, for this wonderful session. Thanks for being with us today. And thanks to oh, each one of you who could join it us. It was great it to meet wonderful. everyone. And, so, and you know, let's stay in touch. If you have any questions, just uh, shoot me an email. Okay. Yep. Have a so wonderful it, day. Take have care. a wonderful day. Yeah. Stay safe. Bye.